Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful scene using a single substance. A scene where we have uh, concrete tiles and some water running in between the tiles. and We'll have a nice uh, HDRI background as well. The first thing we need to set up is the plane that we're going to apply our substance to though. So we're going to go over here to props and in props you'll be able to find a physics props folder and under cloth templates I'm going to apply this soft A 64 by 64. Now the reason I'm applying this plane is because it actually has quite detailed geometry and the more detailed your, ge your geometry is, uh, the better the substance is going to apply to it. So if I go over here to the scene manager, for example, I take a look at the wireframe mode of this plane, you can see it's very detailed. We have a lot of geometry and the more geometry you have on your uh, plane, the better the substance is going to apply to it more in a more detailed fashion. Okay, I'm going to go back to the normal mode here and let's just take this down to the uh, zero on the Z plane. So we can just hit it at uh, our root right here. We can even expand it a little bit if we want. Press the R hotkey and just make it a little bit larger. Something like that will be okay. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to apply the substance to it. I'm going to take a look at the different parameters of this particular substance that we can modify. So I'm going to go over to the content manager here and under media we'll find a material and substance folder and I'm going to apply this concrete pavement uh, substance to our plane. Okay, so we'll go ahead and apply that. You can see it looks pretty cool. We have a nice little, uh, you know, patch of pavement here or a patch of cobblestone. What I'm going to do now is we're going to actually make it a bit more detailed. Uh, first of all, by going over to the materials section here and we're going to tile it uh, on the uh, U and V axes here uh, using the UV settings. I'm just going to press uh, 5, give it a value of 5 on each axis there. And there you go, we have a lot more tiles. We can zoom in closer. And it looks now like we have uh, some tiles looking out onto the horizon of uh, white grid right now. Okay, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to focus more on the substance itself. So let's zoom in a little bit closer so we can focus on the substance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. And you can see we have the shader type set to traditional. What I want to do is change this to PBR. It should automatically do that uh, sometimes. But uh, there you go, and that will change it to a metallic uh, texture map here. And what I want to do now is actually increase the displacement strength of my tiles. So if I do that, you can see we get more depth to our tiles the more I increase it like this. Also decrease it and invert it. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at about 75% right there. Just give us some nice, some nice crevices in between our cobblestones right there. A nice three-dimensional feel. Uh, you can enhance that further by going down here to tessellation. And I can increase the tessellation level to get much more detailed uh, results. Okay, that's just going to increase the tessellation so we get more smoother uh, edges on our stuff. And we can increase the multiplier value to take that even further. But uh, the multiplier value can be fairly sensitive. So you want to keep that at a fairly lower uh, level. Something like this will be okay. We have enough uh, gaps between the cobblestones here. All right, so you can adjust those uh, values all you want. I'm going to twirl that up right now. And let's take a look at, at the uh, substance itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the output size from 512 to 512 to 1024 by 1024. And you'll see we get a bit more detail on the surface there, some uh, um, specs and everything on the surface. Now this is normally the uh, resolution I keep it at for editing. Uh, if you have a super fast computer with a super fast video card, you're more than welcome to try 24, uh, 2048 by 2048. But I like to keep it on 1024 just for performance uh, on a regular computer. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we can go into basic parameters and advanced parameters. Now the cool thing about this uh, tile is you can actually tile it on the x-axis and add more tiles like this. Or we can add more tiles on the y-axis, the opposite direction. So we can de decrease the amount of tiles and increase them this way. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and increase the amount of tiles on the x-axis, something a little bit long, larger there. Uh, maybe something like this. All right. So we get a nice uh, look like a cobblestone street. And what I want to do now is also I'll modify the disorder. The disorder and the edge warp here, you can pump up those values. Uh, notice the disorder kind of, if we take the disorder all the way down, they'll be a little bit too uniform. So if I go over here, you can see it's a little bit too uniform, almost like cars in a traffic jam. But if I increase the amount of disorder, you can see the stones will kind of warp into each other a little bit, like have a bit more wear and tear and they're not perfect anymore. And it can be a bit more jagged as well, which I kind of like for a more randomized look. And then we can also warp the edges as well. So if we warp the edge, notice particularly on, you know, rocks like this one or this one, for example, in the bottom left there, if we warp the edge, we'll get some, you know, really unique kind of uh, 
additions to the geometry. And it'll be a lot more like an old European uh, cobblestone street. We can see a better overview uh, if we zoom up our, our pan up our camera just like that. Now, the ultimate cool thing you can do with this particular substance, you can actually add some water in between the cracks. So there's a water level slider we can uh, bring up just like this. Okay, and we can play that back and the water will, whoops, okay. One thing I forgot to do here is we need to make sure that we change this uh, physics object that we brought in since it is a physics prop. We need to go over here to uh, physics and deactivate the physics, okay. So we don't have our uh, plane falling into oblivion. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this back. You can see there we have our nice looking water flowing in between the cracks. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing we can do here is, uh, in addition to water, we can add some ice and snow. So go to materials again, advanced parameters, and we can have some snow, put some snow on top of those rocks just like this. So maybe the snow is melting and the water is flowing between the, uh, the cobblestones. Um, you can also add some ice. Okay, so if you add ice and decrease the amount of snow there, you get kind of like a frozen wasteland of, of uh, cobblestone tundra there. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and take the ice level all the way down. We don't want any ice. We can maybe keep a little bit of snow here. Um, but before I, before I add a little bit of snow on, I'm going to actually show you, you can adjust the colors of the tiles as well. So if we wanted to have uh, darker tiles, let's take the water down as well. Uh, if we wanted darker tiles, we can do so by uh, just adjusting the tile color right here. You get more like a, of a pavement type look on the top. I'm going to keep a very light color for my uh, pavements, uh, for my cobblestone rather, just something like this. Very uh, nice bleached uh, color, very similar to what we had originally. And you can also adjust the ground color for contrast, make that a little bit darker as well. And that'll make the crevices appear even, even more uh, deep. Okay, so we have a nice uh, dark ground color in between the light tiles and we get a cool looking result like this. So this substance you can play around with a lot. You can really customize it, customize everything um, in the substance itself. And then we can, you know, tweak it with basic parameters as well. I like to do advanced parameters first myself. We can tweak it with basic parameters like uh, increase the luminosity, okay, or decrease the luminosity of the tiles. Uh, you can also change the contrast as well, have higher contrast between the tiles or less contrast. Um, one thing I like to adjust for sure is the normal intensity. Uh, let's give ourselves a little bit more luminosity so we can see the normals a bit better. Uh, normal intensity, if you bring that up, you'll see that we get uh, the results right there. Much more dramatic and realistic look, especially when you go into high detail. If I change to like 2048 by 2048, and you'll see the high amount of detail there on each one of these cobblestones. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's change it back to 1024 by 1024 for now though. And another thing we can modify is the height range. So right now the uh, the cobblestones can be fairly uniform. They're still not really that uniform, but if I change the height range, if I modify it, pump it up, we'll get even more different differential in the height of the cobblestones. It might be a little bit too extreme, so we'll kind of tame that down a little bit back to normal there. Uh, I think we had we were good uh, where we were at. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, let's go, go back and add in the uh, the water momentarily here. Uh, so we're going to have kind of like a flooded uh, cobblestone plane, something similar to like this level would be okay. And you can see right away that our uh, scene light reflects off the surface of the water, but not off the stone. So that's pretty cool. And that's kind of what, the, uh, what we're originally going for here. Let's add some emphasis onto this. Let's add some environmental effects. Uh, we can do that by going to Stage uh, tab right here. And under Atmosphere, you'll find some HDRI presets. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply this Sunset 2 right here. And then we'll get a nice look like this. So now you can see the Sunset. I'm going to press Control g to turn off my grid there. And if we rotate around this way, there you'll see the source of our light from our IBL image is that Sunset over there. And we can see it reflecting nicely off of our uh, cobblestone street. A flooded cobblestone street. Let's maybe take the water level down a slight bit here so we can see more of the stones. There you go. Okay, I think that looks a okay. Cool. All right, and you can tweak that value as well if you want um, by going over here to uh, the visual tab and under your IBL settings we can increase or decrease the strength just like this, okay, and get uh, maybe a bit more focused. Uh, light source like this. Let's try and align the uh, light source here 
with that uh, light there. We can't do that right now, but uh, if we go over here to um, rotate our IBL source, if we have sky, a sync sky orient, orientation image selected, we can rotate our IBL by pressing this button here. You can also use the shift I hotkey and you can adjust the uh, IBL light source right here. We'll just place it right here and let's go ahead and go to our scene manager and adjust our main key light in our scene. So this one we can use the forward slash key to modify the uh, position of it. You can see right there we can kind of align it a bit more with the uh, where the light source is coming from here. But it doesn't really match the color. The color of our key light is a lot is way too bright. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to change this to a more uh, almost like a sunset type orange kind of color, just like this. And there we go. That's looking a bit better. It could even be a little bit deeper as well. Something like that would be perfect. Okay, so now we get a much more realistic look where the uh, light is reflecting. And if we zoom in even closer, we can adjust the darkness of the shadows. Okay, on the back of those cobblestones, you can see the result right there. So we can uh, really emphasize the, the shadows in our scene just like that. And you can even go over to the visual tab and add in some uh, HDR as well. Um, so if we go up here to HDR effect, just activate the HDR effect and boom, we get a pretty severe HDR effect. Let's increase that brightness threshold, to kind of tone it down a little bit and decrease the bloom scale significantly. And let's change this uh, scale and spike length to something a lot smaller. Okay, so we can kind of focus it a bit more. Maybe something small like that would be nice. Okay, very, very minimal uh, spike length. And then we get a nice looking results like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually change the level of the water via animation uh, using the substance parameters. But let's go ahead and add a quick little uh, garnish here to our scene before we uh, move any further. I'm going to go to props here, and under props we can go to, uh, there's a tree section here, and in a tree we have some uh, some grass, some tufts of grass I can just throw into the scene here. We're going to probably have to scale this one down quite a bit. You can see it's quite large for our scene. But uh, just to add a little touch of class there to our... Uh, our beautiful looking uh, sunset scene. We'll just throw it right over there in the corner. All right, um, looking good. So we'll just kind of keep that there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just, uh, like I said, animate the uh, level of the water. So I'm going to select the uh, um, plane here. And what I'm going to do is go to my materials that, again and then into advanced parameters. And you can see the water level, all these parameters that are in, uh, the text is in green color. That means they can be animated. You can use keyframes to animate them. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to lower the level of the water down to something like this here. Okay, something that you can barely see the water. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead a, a few frames, maybe to uh, frame, uh, I don't know, frame 500, 600, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline so we can see our substance track. So I'm going to open up the substance track. Uh, I have my soft A uh, plane selected here. And I'm going to click this button here and open up the substance track. And this is where you can see the keyframe animations. Okay, if we twirl it down just like this, we'll be able to see the substance uh, uh, parameters right here. Okay, so they can be keyframed. Uh, okay, so we're at this frame over here. So now if I go over here and increase the level of the water, you'll notice it'll create a keyframe in my uh, substance track right there. Okay, so basically from here, the level of the water, if I hold Alt and scroll, scroll my mouse button down, I can zoom out of my timeline a little bit, holding Alt and uh, scrolling the mouse button, and you can see the level of the water increasing or decreasing. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. That's just a quick, simple animation. We can go ahead and just play that back, and you'll see the level of the water gradually increase. We can kind of rotate around our scene, get some beautiful reflection of the sunlight off of the water in between the cracks as it gradually rises. All right, so that's really about all I wanted to show you in uh, this tutorial, just a little bit about uh, how you can really uh, create some cool effects using the substance, uh, various substances that are embedded in iClone, and also how to uh, enhance your scene with HDRI lighting, and IBL lighting and all that stuff, and also how to animate your substance parameters. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.